Chinese medicine has been using licorice root extract for years for things like digestive problems and asthma and liver disease. And now scientists are reporting that licorice root extract can actually kill the bacteria in the mouth that's causing things like gum disease and tooth decay and oral infections. So let's talk about licorice root. Yeah, it's been around, like you said, for thousands of years, actually. And it has a powerful effect uh, in lots of different areas. Uh, it, we know that it can do a lot to boost our immune system uh, in the intestinal tract, the secretory immunoglobulin A. It's the main antibody system in the gut from the mouth to the anus is there. And that's why it probably has an effect uh, on people who have problems with their teeth and gums because it, it, it can attack. There are a couple of very important antimicrobial compounds in there. There's licorisidin and there's liquor iso isoflavone and there's glycerizin, which is a very powerful antiviral uh, And you antibiotic. know what else I just thought of when I was a kid? My great aunt and uncle used to always use Sin Sin for their breath. Uh -huh. And maybe it was good for the breath because it killed the bacteria. Isn't that what can cause halitosis? Um, it can. Yeah, absolutely it can. But it does a lot of other things, too, that we need to take uh, action uh, about. And, and remember, I mean, things like making the mucus in the gut thicker so it protects the ulcers or any kind of infection that's there. Uh, and it also makes uh, the cells a little bit longer and it makes the blood supply better. So it, it does a lot of things that are really important. And some of the things we use it for are things like ulcers. Uh, people have peptic ulcers. That's a great way to solve the problem. But so, I thought that there was a difference between licorice root and the deglycerinated licorice root, like the DGL, because right. I think licorice root can be a problem sometimes with people that have high blood pressure and diabetes and liver and kidney disease and exactly the, I think is there a high salt content in it or no it's it's it has the glycerizin in it okay which is the one of the potent antimicrobial agents in there also causes the adrenal glands to produce more aldosterone and that can raise blood pressure and that's why if you use a straight licorice root for more than a few weeks, you run the risk of having hypertension and all the complications that go from that. But if you take the DGL instead of the liquid... DGL root, has the glycerizin removed. The, yeah, so will it do the same thing, though, without the glycerizin? Yes, it does. It just oh, doesn't yippee. have the side effects, so it's a, right, it's a great way to go. So the DGL is what we actually use in clinical practice for people who have ulcers uh, or who have sores in their mouth or any kind of problem in the GI tract where there's inflammation. Heartburn. Heartburn. It's wonderful for heartburn. People who have hiatal hernias, this is the way to go. And instead, in the mainstream, what we're doing is using those proton pump inhibitors, which have all kinds of problems. And what I suggest you do is is put peps, uh, uh, Pepsid or put uh, Nexium in the search box and have a look at all the side effects that range from osteoporosis to uh, senile dementia because of B12 deficiencies that result from long-term use of those things. Well, also, so. I think you're not supposed to take the licorice root extract with certain medications. They say that, and I think it, it's always a trial. It's it's a trial and error thing, so you, if you're on certain kinds of medications like the ACE inhibitors, yeah, that might interfere with their activity. If you're on digitalis, it might do something. But this isn't the DGL, though. This would just be the licorice root extract. It could be either of them. Oh, either of them. Okay. But I think that you have to use your <laughs> clinical judgment. What you don't want to do is use something that's a drug that's going to cause a problem in lots of areas, like the proton pump inhibitors that I just mentioned. Uh, but at the same time, you would also like to be able to use uh, something like DGL for a, a longer period of time and just see what it does, because it's not going to be addictive. It's not going to have long-term problems uh, if you're careful and you're monitoring how your patient is doing. But it's good for people to know, I think, what medicines not to take it with. I think you're not supposed to take it with laxatives either. Well, I mean, these are all things that are suggested by some people who have written articles. Probably, and, the, yeah, well, probably the people that, you know, that the pharmaceutical companies well, I, that I make the medicines. I, I don't think so. I think these are. Want... I don't think so. I think these are side effects you should be concerned about. But like any good uh, clinician is, you use your judgment and you follow your patient and you see how they do because there are benefits and risks to everything that we put in our body that's not already there to start with. Even if it seems like something natural. That's right. I mean, you take a lot of anything. You can die from too much water. Well, I mean, what about candies?